My name is Michael Ladin. I am currently traveling more than 220,000 miles around the world on board my 2002 Storton Stevenson Overland Expedition Rig and KTM Adventure Bike. This is my story. Hello and welcome to the channel. If you are just joining me, this is episode 19. Now the prior 18 episodes of building the ultimate overland expedition vehicle were mostly filmed last summer during the four month build process that it took to complete the entire truck that you're seeing here today. In today's episode, fast forward a little bit and I'm going to show you what the cab looks like completed. Those of you that might be familiar with these old military trucks know that generally they are not comfortable. They come out of the army with seats that I can only describe as sitting on solid rocks. There is not one stitch of anything that's soft or fabric in the cab and they are loud, they are hot, and they are pretty miserable to drive. Now, for somebody like me that spends full time on the road as a nomad, I wanted my truck to be comfortable. So the goals that I put into this thing were A, make it quieter, B, make it just more comfortable, particularly in the seating, and C, I wanted climate control, quite frankly. So air conditioning and not the heat coming from the engine and the transmission, which by the way, are located right here below the cab. So in doing that, I spent quite a bit of time working on all of the elements of this cab. Now, you noticed from prior videos probably that you could kind of break down this whole truck build into three parts, right? There's the cab, there's the actual habitat where I live, and then there is the out exterior side of the truck and everything that went into uh, building the outside of this rig. Today, I'm gonna show you inside the completed cab, what I have in it, how it's a little bit different than the last truck, and what makes it in my opinion, a really super comfortable ride. First up, let's talk about all of the electronics um, that I have in here. One, I wanted easy visibility for everything. So I have my phone nicely positioned right here in front of me. I have an auxiliary, what I call an iPad here, that um, I mostly just use generally when I pulled over or somewhere to look up things if I have internet connection, uh, either through my Starlink or cell, uh, cell network. Um, I have the Garmin uh, navigation system up front here, which I'm going to go into great detail in another video. Um, but this is a super big screen, as you can see, and it does quite a bit, including having a backup camera and control of all my lighting uh, through the Garmin power switch in the rear of the truck. But we'll get to that uh, in another video. 
I also have another full screen backup camera that stays on all of the time so I can see what's going on behind me. I have my Garmin uh, InReach Explorer here that does uh, satellite tracking. Uh, it is a satellite communicator in case of an emergency. And um, so that's kind of what is electronically sitting here in the cap. Now on top of that, from Midwest Military, I have installed a uh, entertainment system. So it has a marine um, head unit here for the, uh, for the music. It's both bu uh, Bluetooth. Um, it does, uh, uh, you know, pretty much it can play anything. Sirius XM goes through there off of my phone. Uh, so generally I'm either listening to Sirius XM or um, uh, Pandora or something like that online or downloaded music or uh, open airwaves go through that. Now, the speakers are built into this unit. This unit actually uh, serves a couple purposes. It is the music system, uh, and it houses the speakers. It also has the air conditioning system that was installed in this cab. Uh, aftermarket is not from the military, and I gotta tell you, it keeps it nice and cold in here. Uh, that is a super awesome addition uh, to this truck, for sure. Uh, other than that, uh, it also has the switch gears you can see along the back here, and these uh, control uh, the power, the auxiliary power for these uh, units in here. Um, the overhead lighting from Nylite that's in the front of the truck, which I'm going to be going into detail uh, in another video, uh, all of my off-road lighting on the uh, mounted on the outside of the cab. Uh, the controls here for the overhead lighting that you see up here, I have a, uh, a map light. I've got some uh, touch lights up above here. Um, that's one of the things that, of course, the military did not put in. There's any kind of lighting when you open the door or anything like that. So um, that is all housed in this uh, center console. These are ram mount tracks, and the ram mount tracks um, are nice because they're adjustable, and you can see you can kind of you know undo uh, here and slide these things back and forth and everything is a little bit flexible. So I have another one mounted over here for the passenger. If I had a passenger, they could have their phone and whatnot um, also mounted over there. So uh, the uh, touch controls here for the central tire inflation is mounted on the side of this, which is nice. Um, it was kind of relocated from where it would be normally positioned up, up front here. So it is a little bit backwards, I suppose, by reading the uh, highway, cross country, sand, emergency, run flat, everything is kind of upside down, but that's just the way it works. Uh, the button right here on the side is my air horn, which I'm not going to push right now because it'll scare everybody uh, outside and uh, that is camped around me. So um, that I wired into there. So that's sort of the center console and the electronic package um, that I put into this truck. Behind uh, that console, you can see I have two um, Pioneer uh, Bass Reflex three-way speakers. So these speakers are in addition to the two that are mounted in this console. So there's actually uh, four speakers. There's plenty of bass and plenty of sound. So when I'm cruising at 65 miles an hour, let's say, down the highway, um, believe it or not, I can hear the music uh, pretty well. And I can tell you, when this truck is stock, you can forget about that. So, like I said, air conditioning controls are right here. Um, the air blows out of these vents. The heating system is stocked to um, this truck, which is a 2002 uh, Storton Stevenson uh, M1085. The heating comes out of uh, the vents in the front here, and you can see the vent controls uh, for defroster and everything else. I jazzed up my, quote, cockpit a little bit. I bought this uh, Freightliner steering wheel aftermarket. And along with that, I kind of, you know, went with my orange theme, of course, and painted up the, the uh, gauges in here. And um, this is a later model truck. So this is uh, considered to be an uh, uh, A1 truck, uh, whereas my last truck was A0. So it's a slightly different transmission uh, Allison control module here. And you've got a bit more of what I would call the dummy lights uh, mounted here in the dash. Uh, this uh, vehicle also comes with a, um, uh, a jake brake or a, um, uh, you know, air brake system. So um, that control unit is right here on the dash. 
And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. I did go with an after uh, or a later model uh, military control for the lighting, a touch, touch button one instead of that uh, big kind of switch thing that you got to have almost two hands to uh, function with. So I did install that in this uh, vehicle as well. But uh, super happy with the cab layout. I would be very remiss here to not focus immediately on probably my number one favorite thing about this vehicle in the cab is these Shieldmon seats. They are, without a doubt, the best seat on planet Earth. Uh, they're German-made. They certainly do not come uh, at an uh, inexpensive price for sure, but they are worth every penny. Um, all sorts of adjustments on them uh, for your back, uh, for height, and uh, for everything else. They are also heated, and I put the heating control uh, mechanisms right here also in that center uh, console. So that is super nice. Uh, behind me, I've got the Iceco uh, refrigerator here. Um, I have two dual zone uh, uh, refrigerators on board this truck. This is, uh, I, I mostly use for water, um, iced tea. I keep, uh, you know, beer and stuff in here. Uh, so it, it, it kind of stays out of my main fridge uh, in the habitat, which is uh, solely used for food. And right now I'm running both of these as refrigeration uh, rather than any freezer. But if I wanted to, I could also... Um, use this as a freezer up here. Um, the soundproofing was extensive. Um, I used multiple layer methodology, if you will, <laughs> methodology. Um, you know, uh, I showed, I think, when I was installing it in prior episodes, but there's, there's carpet, there's the actual military uh, padding underneath this, and then there are multiple layers of, um, of uh, insulation both for sound and for heat. So you may be able to tell by this video right now, I'm talking the truck is actually running and there's uh, quite a bit of wind coming through the, the thing, but it stays pretty quiet in here. I put um, a bunch of foam in the ceiling. Um, I believe there's three inch foam in the ceiling and then I covered it with this uh, faux leather. All of this uh, leather uh, products, by the way, came from Amazon, uh, pretty cheap, including the leather here that is on this center console and on the dash and that diamond uh, sort of pattern looking leather that is on uh, the fuse box over there as well as the uh, side door panels here. So all of this has been insulated. The rear uh, wall, I put, um, I took a quarter ply and put foam on that and then covered that with um, the faux leather as well. So there really are no surfaces in here that are not covered and that significantly contributes to the soundproofing of the cab. Um, this truck, unlike my last one, has nice fold down uh, original stock uh, visors, which is nice uh, for, uh, actually they hold my, um, I have one of those truck um, sunshades that I put in the window when I'm parked, so they hold it in place, which is nice. Um, this center uh, thing I put up here really just to hold the lighting in and secures um, all of this padding to the ceiling better. Um, other than that, that's sort of the cab in a nutshell. Um, it's sort of my, you know, home on the road, if you will. Um, been, didn't mention here, but uh, the seats, both of them uh, have uh, both left and right uh, armrests, which is really comfortable as well. So a lot of cool stuff in here. There's, uh, although it's a two-door, people ask this all the time. Uh, how many people can I uh, realistically fit in a store in Stevenson? Although it is a two-door truck, the cab is pretty deep. Um, as you can see behind, originally this was configured as a uh, three-person uh, seating unit where the third seat was up here. This console wouldn't have been here and their you know feet went down here and they sat up higher. They could pop their head out of the gun turret. Uh, um, uh, obviously, I'm not doing that, but you and conceivably could put rear seats in here if you didn't have this console and you could probably fit I've seen people do uh, that have children that could fit uh, two seats in the back here so you could really have four but for me it's great because tons of storage behind the seat keep my one wheel back here and you know a bunch of stuff I left the military um, hanging I guess it was really for their clothing uh, for the for the troops. Um, I left that to, to be able to put stuff in there sometimes I throw my camera gear and whatnot when I'm on the road in there so that's nice, but there's plenty of room, and obviously this is a, is a very large uh, refrigerator too. So 
Um, that is The Cab. And uh, I hope you guys are enjoying the series. Um, there's a lot more to talk about. I'm going to be taking you on a tour of the inside of the habitat, uh, going through all of the water and electrical and solar and all the systems on board. Super excited to share all that with you. And thanks again uh, for supporting me here on this channel. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you so much to all my Patreon members out there. I couldn't do it without you guys. And uh, we'll see you next week. I want to give a huge shout out to all my Patreon supporters. And if you're interested in exclusive behind the scenes content, be sure to check me out on patreon.com. Thank you so much to all my build partners involved in Project Baobab. This would not have happened without you. And you'll be hearing a lot more about their products and services coming up in this series. Thanks for watching this video. If you like what we're doing, be sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the truck and tree symbol to your right. Once again, thanks and hope to see you soon.